With the Hyundai block degreased and oil free, it's easy to see more of its history. Can you guess what happened here? At some point, it's apparent this engine suffered a rod fastener failure. Definitely on a different set of rods than the ones that are in it now, but one clearly came loose. It left a pretty substantial dent in the crankcase, and look at this right here. When the crank hit that rod, it stopped the engine dead in its tracks and left this nice little gem in the bottom of the cylinder bore. It's below the ring, so it really doesn't matter much. It's just interesting how little effort was put into fixing this originally. Jamie didn't do this, this is how he found it. With the block all oily and greasy, it was hard to see just how much rust there is inside this crankcase. I love how well mineral spirits and air works to dry all that up, isn't that great? What you see here is one of this engine's major problems that may have played a factor in its failure, and it has to go. Rust. This is one of the things that I absolutely have to address in order to fix this engine properly. This rusty crankcase is the reason my oil always looked so horrible. Not only will hot oil wash surface rust away, contributing to oil contamination, it also makes the crankcase more porous, slowing the oil flow and allowing it to trap more sludge, carbon, and dirt. A filthy crankcase immediately contaminates the oil again once it's been changed, and a crankcase contamination is one of the biggest contributors to viscosity breakdown. There's hundreds of other YouTube videos about viscosity, and I'm not going to cover it here. The bottom line is that contamination affects oil quality, and it takes a toll on your bearings. If I remove this rust and smooth out the surface, I stand a better chance at improving my engine's oil quality, as well as how high the oil level sits in the oil pan. Start by putting your old bearings back in. Try to insert them in a way where they block the oil holes. You should never see a problem like this on your equipment. Nobody's engine should ever go through what this one's been through, but if you ever encounter something like this, this is how you deal with it. Since a 4G63 is a cast iron block, steel cup brushes work best for this. Just keep it away from the faces of the mains and the milled parting surfaces of the main caps. It doesn't take long to get great results, but the big brush won't do it all, and you'll need several different sizes to reach into the nooks and crannies and remove it all. I performed several oil system modifications to this block that will move more oil up high in the head, and that means less oil will be in the pan. That can actually be a bad thing. Aerated oil can lead to loss of power and even catastrophic failures. This modification is not necessary for how the majority of engines are used, so you don't see these kinds of treatments applied to factory castings, and we've already talked about what to expect from Mitsubishi in that regard. You may have watched my earlier Gliptol video and been a part of a similar discussion. I'm not going to coat this block in Gliptol in order to solve its oil return issues. This video is giving me an opportunity to show you the flip side of the Gliptol solution for this kind of thing. I'm going low tech, old school. Earlier I mentioned something about porosity of the surface. Oil likes to creep into the surface of the metal, and the more porous that metal is, the longer it takes for gravity to affect that oil. The reason for this is that it flows as a film layer. Picture your crank slinging layer upon layer of oil in the crankcase. The bottom layers flow more slowly where they contact the block, and the outer layers pull on the lower layer as it drains. Oil likes to stick to itself. So if you don't give the bottom layer a porous surface to grab onto, the bottom layer drains faster, and it affects everything on top of it. Smoothing out the crankcase where most of the oil drainage occurs is the best means of improving your oil return flow, but you can take it a step further. Another technique is channeling the block. When you channel the block, you grind shallow grooves in high flow locations in the direction of flow. You should consider thrust angles that will be applied under hard acceleration, gravity, and how that will affect the drainage. Also consider when your oil pump is spinning at redline and moving its maximum volume of oil. Figure out where it's going to flow when it returns. Take out all the rough edge transitions, grind channels in the surface, and give them all a good polish. The polished surface of those channels gives the draining oil greater velocity as it flows across the surface of the crankcase. It's a good idea to polish all of the surface below the cylinder head's oil drain back galleries and around the channels themselves so that it gives what's in the channel a better chance of pulling oil from the adjacent surfaces next to the channels. So by now you probably think I'm nuts. Nuts to spend a few hours polishing the inside of a turd. The inside, not the outside. Essentially, yes, that's what I'm doing. But for those of you who are going to have to digest my Gliptol video with no intentions of subjecting yourselves to that maddening application process, this is something you can do yourself in a couple of hours to help your oil returns work better. But I spent a ridiculously long time trying to grind and polish a channel into this forged alloy steel crankshaft so that we can have a motor oil drag race. It's not really easy to do that, and I've spared you that video, but I'm going to show you that this surface preparation is not a crackpot theory. This really does work. I'm using motor oil to prove it. 
The counterweight with the ground channel is the right lane, and we're going to run a few races to demonstrate how this works. Starting with two drops, I give the left lane the whole shot, and the right lane slept at the tree. Did you see that? No? The right lane finished first. Sorry about the bad camera angle, guys. I can do better than that. I'm actually going to give the left lane the whole shot on every race in these challenges, so that the left lane will always have the advantage. After the track cleanup, we're going to do this again with three drops. We're adding power to both lanes, and this time we're going to alternate lanes to take some of the sleep out of the right lane. Sorry I only have one eyedropper, guys. The left lane is just sluggish and struggling with the terrain and can't find the edge. What if we race over the old grooves, one drop on each side? The right lane is just dominating this competition tonight. Now let's stack the odds. We're going to run three drops on the left, two drops on the right. In theory, the heavier drop should reach the bottom first, and it has a commanding lead right out of the hole. Right lane finally wakes up at half track, and it looks like we have a race after all. Right lane is pulling and wins it by a meniscus. With this demonstration, it's easy to see how much of a difference the track preparation makes. That's enough horseplay. This thing's basically done. I'm just going to clean the rest of the rust out of the corners with fine wire wheels and a Dremel, then wash it out real good one last time with mineral spirits. These are the tricks that you can do to your engine to make a difference in how your oil returns perform. Smoothing and channeling. Unless your crankcase has a terribly cast, blocked up oil return, then your average stock car with a stock oil system, it's really not worth the effort. You can stop it just cleaning it. The last thing I want to do before the final cleanup is wire brush out all the oil passages in the main oil gallery. This is something that you should do whether you did the preparation for assembly or not. This is a detail that lots of people overlook, and any trash in the galleries will affect your brand new bearings. Harbor Freight sells a big box of tubing brushes in brass or steel for under 7 bucks. It's everything you need to clean up every passageway. The looped end on the handle comes in handy when you're pulling them out of the block. You can stick a screwdriver or a ratchet extension through it and give yourself a handle. Whatever you do, don't ever break one of these off inside the block. It would be a nightmare to remove. If you feel it getting stuck or if twisting it binds it, remove it and get a smaller one. I like to start with the steel brushes to remove scale and then clean out what's left with the brass ones. But in order to get into the main oil gallery, the engine stand is in the way of the main oil gallery plug. I'm going to try to remove it on the workbench. To get this thing out, it takes an 8mm Allen head socket. You're not going to get this thing to budge with an L-shaped Allen wrench or a T-bar. That's not coming out. Oh well. I probably should have heated the block up first with a torch and used penetrating oil. Call that a rookie mistake on my part. Learn from my mistakes. That would have prevented this. So now I can only clean three quarters of the way into that oil gallery and any way you slice it, this is still an improvement over what I had. I'm not going to bother with the oil gallery plug, not on this thing. A longer brush would have been nice, but don't forget to brush out your oil returns as well. Just like the Gliptol process, this is not a secret weapon, and it's no holy grail. No two engines are cast exactly the same, and everyone would attempt to do theirs a little bit differently than the next. I'm just planting the seed here. I didn't spend a lot of time and effort making this perfect. This is just another way of leaving something better than I found it. It's only one or two steps beyond cleaning out the rust and scale, and Gliptol is like 10 steps beyond, but polishing is unnecessary with the Gliptol treatment because it replaces the surface texture entirely. In a way, Gliptol is overkill for what's needed to accelerate your return oil flow. But Gliptol does a lot of things beyond that. Like sealing the block, it adds adhesion resistance to carbon, oil, and water, and it fills in all the nooks and crannies. But even some of the new schoolers don't have the patience to apply it properly and bake it on. If any of them wanted to make improvements without that kind of time investment, they would do all the things like what I showed you in this video. They'd polish up the crankcase and cut drainage channels into the block. I'm just grateful to be able to show you two different approaches to achieving the same goal, and I hope you don't mind me covering these extra techniques while we head into those assemblies. The best built race blocks of any flavor are typically where you'd find tricks like this done to the oil returns, not in a street registered Hyundai Elantra. Because of the hodgepodge of parts used to build this engine, I felt that this was necessary. Perhaps it's a penance for its previous builds. Anyway, it's all cleaned up and ready to go now. Next up is fitting a rotating assembly in this thing and cleaning off my workbench. Until then, stay tubed.